Hi, and welcome to this talk. We'll be looking at generative testing and whether it's possible to test your entire code base in just two lines of code. First, let's talk about test-driven development in its usual form. I have a couple of concerns about the way I often find tests, and I'll explain them now. If you're following a TDD approach, often you'll first stub out a method and then add a test which asserts the method's correct behavior and then you fill in the method to fulfill the behavior. And the test framework gives you a tick if you've got it right. The problem I have with many tests I see when folks do this is that they assert the result rather than the behavior like this. Ta-da, the test works, so the method must be right, right? I see devs use the test to inform the behavior of the method via the values. Okay, let's see if we can improve the test so we're not allowing this. There. This will make sure our method correctly follows the behavior needed. The tests fail correctly, and we have to reconsider the method. Boom! Tests pass, so the method must now be correct. Right? All right, we can win here. Let's assert a whole ton of variants that will surely communicate the behavior required. But still, the test isn't communicating behavior, only required results and the method's logic and the test design end up coupled. And while this might seem like a trivial example, I'm sure you've all had tests that break the moment you adjust the logic, but not the responsibility of the method. So this is my first problem with many existing tests. They assert an implementation and do not communicate the required responsibilities or behaviors. The second problem I have with existing tests is that this story style testing is narrow. It often asserts a single path through the system. And the longer the path, the narrower the system behavior that is asserted. You see, every permutation you test is a valid code path. And unless you've done exhaustive permutation testing, you don't know for sure that your method will work with every permutation. In summary, the problems here are that the input and output values are specified instead of the behavior, and that the tests are not exhaustive there's got to be a better way to do testing. So let's try a generative testing approach instead. This is the .NET link syntax. It'll enumerate through all the possible integers and write them all out. Java has its equivalent in the streams API. It'll take a while in this case, only because console.write is slow. If it was another operation, it'll be pretty quick. How about this one? It's a Cartesian join, a cross join. And in Java, you'd use the cross join streams method instead. So what we saw there was a way to iterate through every valid integer possible and then every valid permutation possible. What if we use these Cartesians to generate every valid permutation for a method to check that every code path through our test subject has been asserted? I'll use XUnit here. Now we have just tested every possible permutation for our add method. There's no way that this could get gamed we've tested the method exhaustively. So let's define this as a single test, and we can pull out our valid value variants into a central place to reuse in all our tests. And the result here is a really important aspect of generative testing. Our test is now focused on the behavior asserted, and there's much less of the normal mocking and configuration code you find in tests. We're focused on behavior, not config, and we're testing that behavior exhaustively. And because specific story style testing is much harder to set up in generative testing in that we're just testing all the code paths, the test is less brittle and refactoring doesn't break your tests if the behavior remains the same. A problem with this implementation is that when using link, if you get an exception during the test or assertion, the whole generative test set will abort, whereas it's more useful to get a collection of past, failed and accepting tests instead. So I made a very simple C-sharp library to help with this. It includes these two methods, run and test. Run runs an entire suite of tests, and test safely runs and reports a single test. So wrapping the cross-join like this now guarantees running safely and logs all the details. Here's another example of this test framework in use, this time asserting the behavior of a random number generation and another testing summing a range of ints, comparing it to the sum of the same range randomized. This isn't limited to integers. Let's do it with names instead. This here will run three tests, parsing each name. 
Traditionally, you'd see this as three times the code, each duplicating much of the others. It's a simple example, but the same approach applies to, say, API testing, parsing, or storage testing. And if we look at the data going in, names, APIs, or otherwise, we can see that the data can usually be split up. Let's do this now. Now we're using the Cartesian of the string components to run a more exhaustive set. Instead of three tests, this gives me 27. And again, this could be API testing or storage testing. And I just want to demonstrate the power of testing in this way. Let's add nine new permutations without adding a whole heap of extra boilerplate code. Adding one variant, you lean on the framework to enforce exhaustivity, and so the changes are minimal and limited only to the responsibility affected. Methods like parse can also throw exceptions, so I added a variant, the test method, which allows you to interrogate for success or exception in a safe way. Here I'm using the inputs to assert for argument exceptions. Before I continue much further now, I want to jump back to this for a second. You remember, when we extracted the value variances from the tests, the tests became more focused on behavior and less on config. Because these value variances are generalized, we can build up a centralized set of them. Numbers, including decimal and other floating point, are obvious. So I'll add a couple for strings and int ranges. But this string data is unusual because one of those values is not a string. Can you tell which one? It's the last one. It's an email address. It has specific value in the system, and the functionality of the system depends on it. So although we store the data in a string, we actually have domain value superimposed on it. And since we have domain value on it, we need to validate it. So why don't we pull this out into a type? Creating an email type allows us to do the validation of the data in one place, and any code that thereafter consumes the email address knows that it is not null and it is valid. For example, this post method on the controller. The email now validates at the boundary before the HTTP post resolves, and no surprises will happen after saving to the database when we try to send a notification email. And there's no repeating validation code throughout my system. I know that by the time the method is called, the email cannot be null nor contain invalid data. So the method logic can ditch any validation and return to its single responsibility, so it's simpler to read and reason about. The benefit to generative testing in extracting values into types is that we can now declare emails in our standard data set. But aside from these domain values, many methods will continue to use the standard primitive types, and so we'll create a set that will work for all of these, like this. And because it is a generic set, I've added it to the C-sharp generative testing library too, to save time. Here it is. Also, although the link syntax is terse, it's still repetitive. You have to from in new for all your values and then call test in every case. So I've encapsulated this Cartesian test into a single method on the test data, which will do the Cartesian for you. Doing this, we now represent our test of all the possible permutations of a method in a single line of code, first specifying the method and then the behavior assertion. I'm not sure the gravity of what I just said is coming across, I just tested a method exhaustively by only specifying the method to test and the assertion to use, with no setup to continually refactor. And the test is focused on behavior, so it's easier to reason about. I might have got carried away there. Let's get back to the original problem. Can we now test our entire code base in two lines of code? It's getting close, but not quite. We still have to specify the instance and its method to test. But what if we could get all the methods of an object and automatically run generative tests for each? Fortunately, both .NET and Java have reflection, which means you can get back all the public methods. And so I added support for method info as well. So this code will now loop through all the public instance methods of an object and test each one. Seemed like a neat idea, so I added this method to the generative testing library too. Here's what this code looks like now. It's getting leaner. The last thing to do then is loop over all instances in a code base. Fortunately, that's really easy to do too, by leaning on the IOC injector. This now gets an instance for all the services and generatively tests all permutations of their public methods. So the answer is a yes, you can test your entire code base in just two lines of code. But there is a caveat which we need to cover. Generative testing like this assumes method calls are pure because you can't specify the order of the methods. Reflection just returns them in alphabetical order. And the order of tests against stateful objects is important. If you add data to a storage service, you might want to test that that data is available on a retrieval. But happily, in practice, stateful objects can be few and far between. 
Many classes and modern projects are only non-static in order to have IOC work via their constructors. For example, business layer classes or MVC controllers. And so the method calls inside these classes tend to be pure and therefore testable via generative testing. So in conclusion, yes, you can test your entire code base in just two lines of code. Sometimes it will take using domain types instead of primitive types for the parameters. But this will only help validation happen at the boundaries instead of deep inside your system, and so it cleans up your methods. Other times, you may need to test truly stateful classes, and these often require story-style testing. But in short, generative testing can save you a lot of time maintaining tests while also ensuring greater coverage of your system. I hope you've enjoyed this short talk, and do check out the NuGet package for the C-Sharp Generative Testing Framework in the description for this video.